Hello, everybody. Good to see you all here. Topic of today's Tech Talk um, is an initiative, um, the last mini initiative called Fast Discourse. Uh, well, the Fast Discourse operator, um, well, we created it and it serves to synchronize the uh, it serves to synchronize the group membership from um, FAS, powered by free IPA, the Federal Discussion Discourse Instance. Uh, how did it start? In the beginning, there was a ticket from Matthew where he got inspired by the solution of community shift authorization operator to sync IPA groups with the community shift cluster. And he was thinking about using the same technical solution to sync IPA groups with the discourse groups. It would allow us to use the FAS as a single source of truth and other things like to link permissions for posting in certain areas uh, to group membership or grant Fedora contributors in certain groups, uh, some higher level, not, not a newbie level. So what does it do? Users, users in Fedora discussion are added or removed according to their state in FAS. That applies to the groups that exist both in Fedora discussion and FAS, and that's determined by matching name. Every change made by the sponsors or members to the group in FAS will be automatically mirrored to Fedora discussion. Non-matching groups and some service groups like discourse admins and moderators are ignored. Um, so it's a one-way one way sync of fast group membership to federal discussion. Basically, if a user is added or removed from a group in FAS and that user has a discourse account, the discourse user will be added or removed from that group. Also, if an account is not a valid account in FAS anymore, for whichever reason, the user will be removed from all groups shared in FAS, with FAS. Um, so the solution is very similar to what we used for the community shift authorization operator. We didn't want to reinvent anything, but we wanted to use as much as we could from what has already been written. For this reason, we used the same Ansible-based operator SDK the playbook running tasks, and we used as much of the code we could from the Python modules. The operator images in Quay.io under the federal namespace and the molecule tests are currently designed to run uh, only in a cluster. Running locally, running it locally would require creating your own discourse API key and GitHub file for the kinit and creating a secret. So that's why. And how did we solve it? So the playbook is running five tasks. In the first task, the operator retrieves secrets such as discourse API, uh, key with host name, and fast JSON host name with principal from the private Ansible repo, and populates the variables uh, in the playbook. All configuration for the operator is in the private Ansible repo. There are also variables which the operator uses internally, like the GitHub path, principal, ignore groups, and so on. Those are populated by query and secrets object in the open shift. Uh, second task, the fast discourse operator handles the Kerberos authentication to fastjson via GitHub file. The next task, uh, the operator queries the discourse API to retrieve the list of the groups and list of the users of each group. In the fourth task, the operator queries the fast JSON with the discourse group list and retrieves the membership, membership of each group in free IPA. And in the last uh, fifth task, using set functions, the operator figures out 
first, who is not in this course, but is in I API group, and adds them, and who is in this course and not in API group, removes them. IPA, I always switch them. Anyways, uh, important note is that it's a one-way one thing, so the users added or removed by the sponsors in this course will be kicked out or added again with the next loop. So it's important to point out to, to tell everybody who might be uh, an admin of the discourse so that they use really fast. And for the matching to happen correctly, we had to rename, rename some of the groups in discourse to match exactly the fast ones. Also, only the users that have an account in discourse get synced, not all the users that are in FAS. <laughs> <laughs> so the loop runs every 20 minutes now. This can be lowered uh, to five or two if we see the need. Uh, but we must be careful not to hit the rate, mi rate limit in this course. The rate limit can be adjusted in every discourse instance by default. The maximum is 50, I mean, the default by default, the maximum is 50 requests per 10 seconds per IP. If the task fails, any of them, the entire loop stops and retries. So we eliminate situations like David discovered during testing that when something fails, for example, during authentication with the key tab, and we get an empty list of groups, um, the operator does not go and wipe out all, all the users from the matching discourse group. Uh, if a new group is added to discourse and there is a matching group in FAST, it will start synchronizing the users. Um, so the operator has been tested in staging discourse instance with staging FAST and it has been successfully deployed a couple of weeks ago to production, and it's running in the OpenShift cluster. Uh, here are the links. The, the code is in the pagord slash CP in faster discourse, and in, including some open issues with enhancements we could be still working on. There's a link for SOPs and where you can find docs about how to install, build, and release the operator workflows for deb debugging and so on. And yep, there are ideas how we could still um, enhance stuff, for example, by creating uh, that the link permissions for post in, in certain areas uh, will be mm, bonded to group membership and uh, that the users that are uh, sponsors in IPA will be added as admins to this course, which also poses, yeah, but there's a thing that in FAS, as Matthew pointed out, that in FAS, uh, the sponsors don't need to be members of a group while in this course they have to. So that's a thing that we have to solve. And uh, we could also sync other account information like time zone, region, or pronouns from FAS to this course, or disable this course account when the account is not valid in FAS, in, in case there is a need for that. And yeah, one of the things we might look closer into in the future would be adding um, the users into their groups immediately when they log in for the first time into this course, if there is the need to do that. Um, okay, that is all. We have also one stretched call that we um, 
that would be making the Ansible stuff into Galaxy as an Ansible discourse model, which we figured out does not exist yet. And yeah, with that, um, that's all. And open floor for the questions. We've answered a couple in the chat already. Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, go, yeah, go, go ahead, Kevin. Um, <clears throat> just real quick, um, could you maybe talk about why this is an operator as opposed to a project? What the the reasoning was there? Uh, how do you mean a project? Well, I just mean, an open chip. Yeah. So, what is the advantage of, of an operator over just uh, an application or another uh, well, setup? Well, and I know we've talked about this before, but I think yeah. it would be interesting. So, so, it is a project, and it is just an application. Um, the only thing is, an operator is just an application that's built using um, a design pattern. So a design pattern, which is the operator pattern, uh, and it's built using the operator SDK, which is like a framework. So basically, uh, when we first started this project, like myself and Lenke ran a couple of commands on the command line. And what it does is this thing just automatically creates the framework, like the, um, the skeleton framework of the application. So it creates a whole bunch of files and then like if you look at what we actually added to the project, we only added Ansible. So basically, what we got for free was all of the code that handles the crap, like being able to talk to OpenShift, communicate with OpenShift, uh, retrieve secrets, or you know interact with the OpenShift API. All, all of that kind of heavy lifting stuff is already taken care of and. and and handled and the only thing you have to worry about then is actually just working in in some ansible and anything that the ansible doesn't cover then you can like we did do a couple of uh, python modules or you know ansible python modules uh, just to interact with the discourse api or whatever um yeah so yeah that, that's kind of why we went with that like you get a hell of a lot for free just by going by using this framework so the the whole loop like the 20 minute loop that um, basically is very easily configurable you can change it to whatever you like but we just went with 20 minutes initially at least so from that point of view like it, it's very similar to um the fedora geez i've already forgotten what it's called toddlers the, the whole toddler system so you have something that like you have a short you know a short-lived job that you can run on a loop or you know you can activate whenever you need to um does that answer kevin or yeah yeah does cool. it create yeah. new questions <laughs> well that might be a pattern that we want to use moving forward too for other things so if that yeah thanks yeah, what I love about it is the fact that it, it's it's mostly Ansible, so Ansible and Python, so we, they're probably the biggest um, skill sets we have on the team, right? So, um, like anybody, like, w once they see how these things are put together, they're very very easy to look at. So, like if you just go into the role folder on in, inside the operator code, you, you can see everything is self-contained in that role, and it's just a couple of Ansible playbooks with the with the library files um the python code bundled with it yeah. and of course uh, if you have any dependencies or whatever you build it in when you're actually building the operator container itself and it just um it's built from the operator sdk image itself so you have full control over this thing you can do whatever you like with it add any dependencies or but obviously it'd be better if you didn't have to add anything custom you, you could just depend on the you know the upstream container yep 
So um, I asked myself, like, like you, men you mentioned that there are um, API limits uh, which we don't want to run against in this course. Is there a way in, in the operator pattern to act not on a like time scheduled basis, but or an event triggered basis? Yeah. So basically, the, the whole point of the operator is that we've actually added a new API to OpenShift. So by installing this operator, we've created this, uh, what's it? Uh, let me put it in chat. It's like pass discourse config. So we created this new object called the fast discourse config. You know, it, it completely depends on how you've developed this thing, but you could very easily add something that could then react on react, you know, in, in a reactive nature. So if there was something like, um, if, if there was like a listener hooked up to the Fedora messaging that would then create or edit one of these objects in OpenShift, the operator then can take that and then run a, an Ansible task or an Ansible playbook um, to mm -hmm. then do something based on that action. But, but in our case, um, it, it doesn't do anything apart from like a single instance of that object will actually just make the operator loop run. So every 20 minutes, it just reconciles everything. But there's mm -hmm. nothing to stop um, us adding something, uh, I don't know, like a fast discourse user object or something like that, which might, um, it might go update a particular individual user when one of those objects are created mm -hmm. and then when the, when it's done then it might delete it you know thanks okay so i have a question what will happen if the membership of the user is changed on the discourse side it, then it will get over it overwritten just overwritten okay yeah it, the person if you add it in on discourse it will in latest in 20 minutes it will get wiped out yeah. and <laughs> if it gets uh, deleted it will get re-added okay yep so one way sync <laughs> yep yeah i was just surprised that if there is any group on uh on the discourse side and that isn't in ignore list it will actually crash the loop i it, it, i, I kind of i probably miss i misspoke look i was thinking about that it won't it won't crash the loop but what will just happen is it'll just be ignored because oh. when you go to the the code that goes to ipa and says give me all of the the group membership that's in this particular group it, it'll just return like an empty list and that's what we want now because uh, yeah exactly do we yeah. i mean if somebody um, creates a group in in discourse which is not in fast so so be it it will only not get synced yeah. with anything yeah that's that's great that that is how should it work how should it work so yeah it's okay okay and i see that james is asking yep sure so I wondered, um, you you have like backoffs and um, you can retry errors and things like that. Um, do you just log those or do you put them in any kind of monitoring thing? Just logging. Uh, at, at the moment, we have, um, so it does expose um, some default metrics, but at the moment there's nothing scraped because we don't really have a, a good solution for it. So we don't have, um, uh, we could get them logged by the OpenShift uh, user monitoring stack. I mean, it's it's already installed and ready to go. Uh, it's fairly trivial to get, get them hooked up and being captured by the, the OpenShift monitoring, or sorry, the user, the user workload monitoring stack. But from there, basically, nobody's actually viewing it. So as far as I'm aware, unless it creates an alert or something, like there would be no alerting on top of it, for example. So it would just be metrics that just go into the ether. 
Uh, uh, we, do, we do have some alerting for other stuff, uh, other OpenShift apps for like crashed pods and things like that. And it triggers an alert and it does send an email, but yeah. I'm not sure if this could be hooked into that. It, it could be, yeah, yeah. I, I need to go look at that. And eventually, I'm actually also working at the moment. I'm working on getting Zabbix installed. So I have um, I have Zabbix installed in on a, a rel nine box in staging, and I'm currently just today. Uh, well, yeah, I managed to get the database working, and I have the Zabbix server hooked into it. So I'm trying to figure out now how to expose the the GUI so we can actually play around with it. And there's already a whole bunch of work done on getting the Zabbix agents reporting back to an instance. So I'll have to see, can I check if that's all working? But once that's done, then like I'd like to get the OpenShift stacks reporting back into the Zabbix server. And then at least we'll have uh, like one place where Infra will be able to look and see everything you know, in place. Yeah, at the moment, there's a whole bunch of um, pieces that are, there's a whole bunch of jigsaw pieces on the table that are not actually talking to each other. So <laughs> it's a work in progress. Uh, there was a, also a question by Kevin and Aurelian before. Why were not using the um, Fedora messaging to get the, to get the groups? Um, yeah, I, I know that we had a discussion about it, but I forgot what. Like, I, I remember the decision, but I don't remember the reasoning yeah. of the decision. So, the reason, like, initially, I, I just wanted to get, um, I wanted to get a, a system that wasn't heavily dependent or too heavily integrated with some of these other systems, just just to get get it over the line and delivered. Now. I would prefer to keep the initial system just running on this loop. I'd prefer to, like, the thing that, that Nils asked, or the question that Nils asked, I'd prefer to extend it, like, have a kind of reactive API. So basically, extend the operator to, to be able to handle um, reactive requests. So if we're going to have something like a, a listener hooked up to Fedora messaging, I'd like that listener then to create something like a, I don't know, like a fast discourse user object. And then the operator will take that object, find out what's the name of the user that needs to be actioned, whatever the action is, and then go do it at the end and delete that object and clean it up. Like I, I prefer to do it that way rather than, um, than uh, you know, and delaying the, the release of the whole thing. Uh, Hope that that answers at least. But uh, we can also re reduce the twenty minutes. Like from testing, I think we can reduce it down as far as one minute. But well, some somewhere between one and five minutes. But at the moment, we just have it running on twenty. So it, it can change. It, it can be changed later if it's um, like if the user experience is not good. But so far, no complaints, right? <laughs> I didn't register any. Nobody oh, knows where to direct the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are no more questions, um, I'll stop the recording. <laughs>